Former Ohio State Senator Nina Turner announced last week she's launching another bid for Ohio's 11th district. Let's watch. Families are struggling with higher gas and food prices, stagnant wages and shrinking benefits, while corporations make record profits. These are unprecedented times. Our leaders can't settle for just enough. They must fight for what we deserve. I'm Nina Turner and I'm running for Congress because we deserve a voice for change in Washington. Nina Turner is running on Medicare for All, Housing as a Human Right, Expanded Public Education, and Environmental Justice. Turner will also face Congresswoman Chantel Brown, who beat Turner last year in a Democratic primary, former Sanders campaign co-chair, Ohio congressional candidate Nina Turner, joins us now to discuss the campaign. Thank you so much for joining us. It's great to have you with us. Thanks, Riley, and thanks, Ryan. Good to be with you. So tell us, you know, why you're making another go at it. Go at it. Well, the challenges and or framed another way, the, the things that motivated me to run the last time still motivate me to run it this time. The challenges that the people of Greater Cleveland face are so pronounced as are those sim similar challenges happening across the country. But I really do believe that my district, my community, this community that I love so much deserves a champion. It is one thing to vote the right way, but it is another thing to be a fighter. And so whether it is healthcare, whether it is wages that are not keeping up with inflation, uh, people are suffering and they, they definitely need a champion. And, the, and Greater Cleveland is definitely understands what it means to have a champion. So Chantel Brown yesterday announced that she would be co-sponsoring uh, Medicare for All in, in the House. What was your reaction when you saw that? How do you think that that'll play into the race? You know, we, 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 want, we want people to come to, to the left. Welcome. Welcome. The water's just fine. Glad you, you're finally uh, seeing the, the light. Uh, there were many opportunities to be out there on the front lines on this issue, as I have been and so many others. And you don't necessarily have to have an elected title to do so. So we see what's happening here. That being said, I, I do want to see more people uh, uh, want to see those kinds of things happen in this country. So I'm glad that uh, she's following my lead. Well, and, and do you, you know, you, you're applying pressure to move people uh, to the left. Is that part of what you're trying to do, trying to accomplish? Well, I want to win this race, Robbie, no doubt about it. But yeah, I do want the people who are elected to Congress to understand that the needs are great and that we don't have a whole lot of time to show people that we really care about them and public policy matters. Uh, poverty, for example, is a, is a policy choice and that the people who hold the biggest titles and who walk the halls of Congress and also who occupy the White House have an opportunity to give people something they can feel. And it is no surprise to you, Robbie, or Ryan, what I believe that those things are, and I'm not alone. The majority of the American people, no matter how they identify themselves politically, poll after poll, survey after survey shows that they do want to see uh, health care as a human right. They do want to see minimum wage increase. They do know that they need paid medical leave or paid family leave, for example. They want to see voting rights expanded and protected. So uh, the progressive agenda itself really is America's agenda, whether or not people identify themselves as progressive progressives or not we take these things issue by issue and we know one thing for certain that people are suffering especially if you're poor working poor and barely middle class and you need help and part of that help has to come from the federal government showing through public policy that they get it and that they really care about people and that really is what the agenda the progressive agenda is all about and let's talk about the district that you that you're going to be running in because gerrymandering is one of the under discussed elements of voting rights because the right to vote doesn't just include the right to go to a ballot box and to put your ballot into that box and then to go home. Your, your vote also has to count and, and be meaningful for that to matter. So Ohio is a state that you, you tell me has a, is about 45 percent, 40 to 45 percent Democratic at this point, but the new map. Uh, that Republicans had proposed would make it a 13 to 2 uh, congressional delegation. That's so 2 out of 13 is not remotely 45 percent. So that's a massive number of people being disenfranchised. So in order to do that, you're going to pack a lot of Democrats into the district that you're running in. But which Democrats wind up in that district could influence, you know, whether it's you or Brown who come out on top. You know, you did extremely well in, in both Akron and, and Cleveland. Uh, Brown did better in the in the suburbs, and so what what's your what's your guess at this point of how the 
the district is going to look. The court recently struck down the 13 to 2 map as unconstitutional. Do you think that they'll manage to get a similar map through? And, and what, what, are you, what are you expecting to be the place where you're going to run? Well, I know for sure, and Ryan, yeah, gerrymandering is horrible and it's happening all over the country and it's something that should not be a partisan issue, but we all know that it is. So I'm going to put that to the side to say that what we do know for certain right now is that all of Cleveland will be in whatever new configuration of the 11th Congressional District happens. And I did well in Cleveland, the city where I was born and raised. We just need more Clevelanders to, to come out. And I think what happened in the special election and also what happened in the, the 2020 presidential election where Cuyahoga County and particularly Cleveland had a very low voter turnout is that people are opting not to participate. And why is that? We all should be asking ourselves, why is that? And I believe part of it is that government is not giving them something that they can feel. We have got to change public policy to bend towards the will of the everyday people of this country. And that is another key reason why I am running. I want people to be motivated to vote, not just vote, just get out there and make your voices heard. But definitely gerrymandering has an impact because it allows politicians to pick their constituencies instead of the constituencies being able to pick the politicians. And that should be democracy is at stake when we allow either party to gerrymander in the way that it is happening right now. Why do you think the Democratic Party, President Biden, is kind of floundering right now, underwater, poll numbers, uh, people are, are very cl clearly unhappy with the direction of the country. The Democratic Party is expected to get killed in the midterms. Um, what do you think is not working? Well, Robbie, recognizing people's pain you know, although it is true, the bipartisan infrastructure bill passed. I want to use that as an example. That is true. On the other hand, that passing is not going to have an immediate impact on Big Mama or Big Daddy. And Big Mama and Big Daddy, I'm using them in reference to the people who are suffering the most. Uh, people can't take off from from their work, from their jobs. Most working people cannot without fear of losing that job. So having paid leave is important to people who punch a clock every single day. That is something that the Congress could do right away. Making sure that you increase the minimum wage has not increased in 11 years. Everything else is going up. Food prices, gas prices, cost of living, up, 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 up. The pay of CEOs, up, 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 up. But what is remaining the same or stagnant is the wages of everyday people. So part of the challenge, Robbie, is pushing policy that changes the material conditions of, of everyday people right now, immediately. I mean, for example, Robbie, if you were in the middle of ocean drowning, you don't want somebody to say, oh, we're going to break this up. We'll get to you when we get to you. You want to know that somebody's going to come out and save you. And that is what needs to happen, especially in the midst of a pandemic. And it's just not happening. In, in, in the last special election, the disparity between the turnout in the suburbs uh, versus the, the, sit, the city core was so huge that it led to a lot of speculation among people that Republicans, because they didn't have much else to do on that day, a, a lot of Republicans had participated in that Democratic primary, which, hey, the, the, those are the rules. Go ahead. If you want to vote in a Democratic primary, just go for it. Uh, do you... I'm sure you've done a pretty thorough analysis, precinct by precinct, of what happened in that special election. Is that, is that your sense that that did occur? And how will that affect this, this next primary? Will, will they, do you expect them to show back up again? It is true, Brian, and we have done some analysis. Thousands of Republicans actually participated in the special election. Let us not forget that it was the only election going on at the time in in, in the country, and so all eyes were on it. Uh, our campaign even has have emails uh, to the effect of some Democrats asking Republicans to get into this special primary. And the target was definitely me. There was an anybody but Nina campaign wage, 13 people in the race, but it, the target, I was the target. And they understood, I understand why, even though I don't like it, because they know that my only special interest will be the people that I serve. So your point, Ryan, about the city of Cleveland, the Cleveland pop 
proper being outpaced like that. There is something wrong with other forces being able to come in and decide who the leaders should be. That should not happen. And I just believe in the Democratic primary that Democratic, Democratic leaning uh, independents and also Democrats should choose who the nominee is and not the Republicans. And on top of that, what we do know from the financial records is that a lot of Republicans actually donated uh, to her campaign, including Robert Kraft, the owner of the Patriot, who's a Trumpite, the owners Haslam, the owners of the Browns. And there was a recent article that just came out just this week from the Cleveland Plain Dealer that shows that some of those same donors participated in uh, funding a PAC that racially smeared our new mayor, Justin Bibb. It is in the Cleveland Plain Dealer. So we got to ask ourselves, are those are the, are those the types of forces that we want to be able to decide elections? And not only, Brian and Robbie, not only for the 11th district, because I want people to understand me clearly. I am about democracy, no matter if it's in my district and state or somewhere else. We must all be concerned, no matter who we support, about forces that don't, they don't care about these communities coming in and having that outsized influence on the elections. And that is why I am for campaign finance reform. People with the most money should not have larger voices, and they also should not be able to come in and dictate who a nominee is, whether they're Democrat or Republican. I am proud that my campaign, yeah. the overwhelming majority of the money, money that we raised came from grassroots donations. That is a difference between grassroots donors building a force and having wealthy interests decide who's going to lead. Nina Turner, thank you so much for being with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you both so much. Stay with us. We'll have more rising in just a minute.